What's interesting about this woman is that she talks about, like, it, I agree, it's leaning into an insecurity about you being overweight. You're making a TikTok talking about it currently. If you date anybody in your life, in your life, do you not think that they click on your Instagram and they go, oh, this girl has this Instagram with a lot of followers. Oh, look, she has her TikTok linked. Let me just go ahead and click on that TikTok. Oh, wow, her whole TikTok is literally riddled with videos after video after video talking about your insecurities, about being fat, about not being able to get men. That is a major red flag. I'm breaking up with you. You are crazy. That is a crazy thing. And the fact that you can sit there and say, I don't want to tell this guy. I don't want to warn him that I'm fat. But you have no problem posting publicly on the internet about all your insecurities for thousands of people to see. Where is the logic? Hey ladies, I need to know if you experience this too. Specifically the curvy girlies. So we all know there's like a type of man that's into a curvy woman, but he would never date a curvy woman. Like the girlies who know, know. So when I've been going to the gym recently, I've noticed that there are guys there with their petite girlfriends. Their girlfriends are gorgeous. They're usually like blonde, petite, fit the ideal beauty standard. And maybe this is just men being shitty. I wouldn't put it past them. But like they're very clearly dating someone who is not like you at all. And they just give you the look. Like a little side eye or an up and down. Like if they weren't there with their girlfriend, you would expect them to come hit on you. This is this just this just screams like <laughs> such high pick me energy. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, okay? Now, I prob you're probably a human. You watching this particular video currently right now, you're probably a human being. And if you're not, I don't know what you are. Maybe an alien 4,000 years in the future. Somehow that picked up on the broadcast signal of this particular video or whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm happy you're here. But being a human being, you have urges, you have thoughts, you have, in you have these particular types of things that go on in your head, right? Now, regardless of whether or not you do or do not have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or you're committed to that individual, you do have thoughts in your head. And usually with those thoughts in your head, you do one of two things. You either act upon those thoughts or you don't act upon those thoughts, right? That's usually how things go. Now, if you're in a social situation, um, I don't know why I always have to bring up like basic human being ideas here. Or like, it seems like these people have never actually been in relationships before. But if you're in a relationship with somebody, do you think it's a far-fetched idea that the person that you're with is going to have feelings for another person in the sense of like, wow, that person looks really good. Wow, that's a really nice butt cheek. Or, hey, that guy has really broad shoulders. Do you think that that is like crazy? Like, do you think that people, like this screams like a guy that watches porn is cheating on me type of energy. And that's fine if you think that. Most people that think that are, I don't know, like, that's crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. But this this is what it is. This is basically what it is. And to sit there and, like, say that this guy was, like, ogling at you or, like, he looked you up and down and somehow that means anything at all is crazy. And, by the way, I don't know if that even has anything to do with the fact that you're fat at all. You do realize that women all the time have guys hit on them. Like, that's a common thing. Like, from the age of 12 and up, women have, since puberty, right, women will always have guys that always want to give them dick. Never, like, it's it's perpetual, right? And it's been like this for all of time. Now, I get it. It's very, very, it's probably great for you to say this, given the fact that you're obese and you think that this gives you some more value or something like that. I don't know. But it just screams like you feel like <laughs> this is a way to justify your existence while being fat. Like, hear me out. You're basically saying, I'm fat. His girlfriend is traditionally attractive in the sense of, like, beauty standard attractive. And he's still looking at me. Obviously, I'm hot. Obviously, you know, he doesn't want to date fat girls because being a fat girl is not socially accepted. And that's the only reason why he's actually not dating me and dating her is because she's more socially accepted and I'm not. Which is really gross, by the way, because even though his girlfriend's like very socially attractive, that doesn't mean anything. Because how do you know he's actually with her based off of her looks and other things, other, other things behind the looks don't apply? But for you, obviously, it's way, it's yours is much like, it's, it's way, way, way more nuanced when it comes to you right like you are <laughs> that what i'm basically hearing from this is like you think you're better than her or you're deeming that <laughs> it's just such a thought it's like the, the thought train it's, it's so crazy i have to keep explaining the way these people think because i've heard this this train of thought so many times and it's so crazy that i can perfectly articulate exactly the way these people are thinking about it and if you do think that this guy is like ogling you and that he's going to cheat on his girlfriend, but he's not doing it because you're fat. He doesn't want to be seen out in public, but sex is always on the table. That's gross. How do you know that? How do you know that? If a guy's just looking at you, you know how many times I've looked out like 
Okay, let's say you have a car. You see somebody else's car, and it's better looking than your car. Do you not look at that car and go, wow, that's a nice car? It's the same thing, right? That's not, that doesn't mean that you're going to go to the dealership. And that doesn't mean that you're going to talk to the guy that sells the car. And that doesn't mean you're going to put down the down payment. That doesn't mean you're going to go into debt. That doesn't mean you're going to take out a loan. That doesn't mean anything. All it means is that you're acknowledging, wow, that's a nice car. In the same way, for instance, if you're dating somebody that you're committed to and you love them or whatever else, and you look at somebody else and you go, wow, that person has a nice face. Wow, that person has a nice chest. You think about these things. That's okay. That's completely fine. You're a human being. You're going to have these thoughts, okay? And I don't know why you would just immediately throw men under the bus in the sense of like, oh, men are just shit while saying something incredibly terrible like you just did, making yourself seem more shit than the men that you're speaking about in a general way. But anyway, let's go. Someone who is not like you at all, and they just give you the look, like a little side eye or an up and down like if they weren't there with their girlfriend you would expect them to come hit on you it's just gross like the way that she's talking about this is really really gross man i don't know if i'm explaining this the right way but it's just so interesting that there are men who like will go out in public with their skinny blonde beautiful girlfriend but they look at curvy women like i you know you know if you know it just makes me so uncomfortable and so angry at the same time like i'm used to being objectified by men but for what does this have to do with being objectified by men first of all i like, if a guy's looking at you, why would you ever... I feel like this woman is... She's projecting so hard right now, dude. She's projecting so hard. I understand, like, it's very easy for you to make a video on the internet about a guy that looked at you in a story that may or may not be... I don't even know... Do men usually go to the gym with their girlfriends? I don't know. I've never really done that anytime I've ever dated somebody. I don't like it. I like working out by myself. So maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, right? But... If you're going to make this video and like shit on men because they're looking at women, are you incapable? Is the, the, is the thought like not going through your head that women also do that as well? Like, do you not think that women look at men and go, wow, hubba hubba. Look at that. Look at that strong monolith of masculinity. Look at that giant broad chest. But that doesn't mean that you do anything about it, right? You know how many women I've met that go, you know, my boyfriend's not six feet tall. And this guy, he's attractive. He's very attractive. He's six feet tall. But my boyfriend gives me so much stuff. Like he's so he's supportive. He does this for me. He does that for me. He's he's a good looking man. He does this. He makes money. Whatever. That doesn't mean that you're gonna do anything about it, right? Like that'd be like getting upset with your girlfriend because she watched gay porn. Do you think she's gay or something? Like or like you, you think that's like some kind of deep seated meaning or something like that? No, that's not how that works, man. Like it just means that somebody's looking at another person. And for somebody like this to sit there and make a video, a whole video about how like, oh, I know what this actually means. Like, he doesn't, he, he doesn't actually like his girlfriend. But the only reason he actually, the only reason he is actually with her is because she's pretty and it's socially acceptable to date a pretty girl that's thin. But I know that I'm really what he wants. That's just gross. It's just nasty. I don't know why this woman thinks she's so special. You're not. That's not how that works. There is more to somebody based off their physical appearance and stuff behind it. Just because somebody's pretty doesn't mean they're a good person. You know how many people that I've met that are traditionally socially very attractive and then you talk to them and like this person's agonizing? A lot of people, okay? So how do you know he's with this woman because she looks good? Maybe she has a great personality. Maybe she knows how to make iced tea. I don't know. Maybe she has like the same color socks. Maybe she pays her taxes on time. There are a ton of things that make somebody way more attractive than just physical appearance. And don't get me wrong, physical appearance is great. But to, to, to make a video like this is just, oh man, dude. Like, I don't know. It just screams I've never dated anybody in my entire life. It just makes me so uncomfortable. And just so like pure fem cell energy. This is what this is. Like, it's just pure fem cell angry at the same time like i'm used to and then blaming men like just blanket statement men are gross because they looked at me okay being objectified by men but for some reason when those specific men do it it's just different you know that was just a nasty video just a nasty video overall something i just can't seem to wrap my wig around why do these gym rats love plus size women hold on i'm complaining i'm complaining but why like Tell me. I, I don't know if this is true or not. Can somebody please let me know down below in the comment section? Because I know a lot of guys that go to the gym quite frequently. And they are big, big, masculine, ginormous, muscled up, just big black men, right? And I, I, I don't think I've ever seen them date women over 200 pounds, ever. And this is anecdotal, of course, right? But this is also an anecdotal thing right here. So I would love to know, because I hear this... I, I hear this quite a bit where it's like muscled up gym bros dating fat girls. And usually the thing I hear is like, well, they're big. So they like to throw around a lot of weight. Therefore, they like to have women that are big and they can throw them around or something like that, which I don't even know if that really makes any sense because 
Wouldn't it be more efficient if the girl was smaller? No, I don't know. Whatever. I'm not shitting on somebody, by the way. If you want to get thrown around, I don't care. That's completely fine. Whatever. I peed in a girl's mouth. I'm not looking down upon you for your sexual preferences, right? We're not. I'm not here to kink shame unless we're talking about things that are obviously really, really weird, like getting eaten or, I don't know, pooping on somebody's chest. That's just weird. You know, there are some sexual proclivities that just kind of make me question why you even like those at all. Like, Watching somebody eat food, for me, I don't like it, and, and, and not even the slightest, because, like, watching somebody eat is very uncomfortable, because the mouth noise is that, that mouth noise, I don't like it, and then also, I don't like it to see somebody consuming food, I don't like it, it's just nasty to me, but there's a good portion of our society that does like watching big, big women eating copious amounts of food while, they, while they're on the other side of the screen, stroking off, and that's just what it is, for me, I don't know. I don't know why it's like that. I don't know why so many dudes are like that. I have a friend who's into race play, right? So he likes to dress up like a a black dude in the 90s. He wears like the really, really, he is black himself and his his girlfriend is white. And he wears an ankle bracelet, a do-rag and a wife beater. And he, he tells me, he goes, I, I walk into the room and I tell her, yeah, I'm black. I'm black. I'm black. I just got out of prison. I just got out of prison. Yeah, I rob people and stuff like that. And his girlfriend gets super turned on by that. Hey, whatever, right? If that's what you're into, it's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's kind of weird, but it's all right. Like who am I to sit here and say, if it's a productive relationship, they're great people. They're good. They're good together. Interracial, you know, cool. That's awesome. You know, living the dream. I don't care personally. It's a little weird, but it's all right. Um, I can kind of see that more than somebody getting eaten, for instance, or somebody like beating off over the internet, watching a big woman eat 4,000 calories worth of like three slices of cake. I don't know. Like personally speaking, I don't know why it's like that, but when it comes to gym bros, I've heard this actually quite a bit. Somebody needs to enlighten me. Is this common? And then also, if it is common, I need to know why. Tell me, are you looking for a transformation story? Because if you are, I could use a free trainer, but... At least she's into it. At least she's into the idea that a gym bro... I'm not opposed to people going into relationships for the wrong intent, and eventually they turn out for the right intent. Like, for instance, most people that go to the gym, go to the gym because something drastic happened to them. I know... Uh, that's, that's what happened to me. I remember I went through a big breakup and I was feeling really, really depressed. And on a whim, I literally just walked into a planet fitness, put down a membership and started working out. And I did, I went in for the wrong reasons. I literally went in there cause I had depression and I was fucking, you know, agonizingly in pain. And then I went in and I started working out and over the periods of the next few weeks, I forgot about that. And then I started working out because I saw progress and I was like, wow, I'm actually like doing something. Like I feel better. I, I look better. I have more energy. I I'm drinking more water. Like People do things sometimes with the wrong intentions, and then eventually it, they transform into other things. Like a lot of guys go to the gym for the reason of impressing women. Like you know it, I know it, and maybe some girls do too, right? Um, I don't know personally. I don't really talk to girls that often. I'm not gay or anything like that, but it's just like I have a whole bunch of guy friends. But I talk to these women. Um, I talk to these guys, and they always tell me the same thing. Like I'm gonna get into the gym. I'm gonna I'm gonna build my I'm gonna build my muscle. A lot of the guys don't work out there. You know, I see this quite a bit. Women don't go over to the, the weight racks because they're intimidated by the weight racks. You shouldn't be intimidated by it, okay? Lift your upper body. I know women don't have that same kind of upper body strength that men do. You can still gain a lot of muscle as a woman. You got that shit. Don't worry about it, okay? In the same way, men are almost like completely repelled by the leg areas, dude. I It is so infrequent. I see a guy on a squat machine or I see a guy doing lunges or doing anything at all. Like these dudes are just sitting there and I've even talked to these guys. I go, bro, why don't you go doing the leg? Like, why are you doing legs? It's like, oh, I do legs once a month. Once a month, dude? What is it, like a period cycle? And... They'll go, I just don't want big butt cheeks. Women like big butt cheeks. They do. They want to grab onto something. They want to have a guy that's well-figured. You know what I'm saying? A guy that with big butt cheeks is not a bad thing, right? It's cool to have big butt cheeks as a man. So I always tell dudes, work on the butt cheeks. It's completely fine. You're not gay for having a big butt. Men are not going to look at, well, maybe they might look at your butt. But that's not even inherently a bad thing. If men are looking at your butt cheeks, that's a compliment. That's a good thing. That means they want to stroke you down. I don't care. What? I don't care. I don't care who is attractive to me. If anybody is ever attracted to me ever, I take it as a compliment. I don't care. That's great. Thank you. I appreciate it. It is a compliment. But um, usually it's only men though. I've been approached by too many men. I've never in my entire life been in public. Okay, in public. I've never been approached by women in public, but I've been approached by too many men. Too many men that have approached me. And I think two of them have asked me to suck me off. And, uh, I'm just not for it, obviously. I'm not, like, into men. And if you're into men, that's fine. I'm not personally. But 
I see a lot of dudes like repelled by the weight racks um, and working out their 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 bottom halves. Work out your bottom halves. It's completely fine. Um, so when I say like go into the gym for the wrong reasons and then eventually finding the right reasons, it might be okay to do that, right? As long as you're getting in there, as long as you're doing the right thing, as long as you, you know, even though you're going in for the wrong reason, eventually you might find that you're going in for the right reason. Things change, right? And it's okay to change, by the way. So this girl saying it, going like, I could use a body transformation. It's the wrong reason. Like you shouldn't go to the gym to impress somebody else. You shouldn't be like lifting weights or losing weights because you think you're going to appease somebody else. That's the wrong reason. But if it gets you in the gym and if it gets you to start losing weight, maybe somewhere along that line, you start realizing like, ah, I can lose weight and I'm going to look better for myself and I'm going to be better. I'm going to indulge in more liquid sustenance like water and things such as so forth. So I'm not opposed to it. Um, it's a bad reason, but it's okay. Nonetheless. Why? Tell me the truth. For real. Like, I, I really want to know. Like, plus size girls, have you ever been with a gym rat? Like, a whole trainer, and he just loves it? Like... I, I remember I knew this. I didn't know him, but there was a trainer at the gym that I went to, and this guy sucked dick. He was so bad at his job, and he would mainly help, like, older people, but sometimes, like... They would book him for sessions, right? And he would go over to these old people and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do this one exercise machine for like 20 reps or whatever. I'll be right back. And I saw him go over to like the old people and go over to this one girl that was on the squat machine. Like, yeah, yeah, you got that right form. I like the way you're doing that. That's real cool. Yeah, let me show you something, though. Let me show you how to get it done real efficient and like shit like that. And um, keep in mind, this guy had no muscle definition at all. And I'm just thinking like, do you even work here, dude? Like, what are you doing, man? And uh, he was neglecting, like the old woman that was like on the the the, the chest press machine was just sitting there looking at him like, the, you know, while this guy was like finessing another girl. Um, anyway, I don't know. What is T? Transform me though. I'll be Sheila and go to the top of the mountain, baby. Oh shit! Why do these gym rats love plus size? From personal experience, um, I've only dated gym rats. Like. That's literally been the only type of people that I've dated in the past. And I'm not surprised, dude. People nowadays are so incredibly diverse. Like whenever I tell people, I remember I was talking to this one girl one time and she was black, right? Because I've only ever dated black women before. And she was like, so like, why means like you're a white dude. So like, why would you date a black girl? And I was like, I don't like, I don't know. Like, I mean, you seem cool, I guess. And she was like, I know. But like, usually white guys don't like date black girls. And I was like, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I just... I mean, I get it. Like, usually when you see, like, commercials and stuff like that and there's, like, an interracial couple, it's almost always a black guy and a white girl. That seems pretty socially acceptable. But you never see it on the opposite end. But I don't really – it's not, like, super important to me. I don't really care if you're black or white. It just kind of seems like whenever I throw my rod out and come bring it back, it's always a black lady. But – um, she was like testing me. She was like, so, um, what are your friends like? And I was like, I don't know. They're just, they're cool guys. And then she would go, oh, do you have any black friends? And I'd go, yeah, every, every one of them. They're all black guys. Like all of them. They're deep black guys too. Like real black guys from like Haiti, you know? And then they're always like so surprised. And then when I go, yeah, I've only ever dated black women. They go, what? what? Really? Wow. Um, I don't know. Like, it's just what it is. So I'm not even surprised. So people have very, very weird dynamic, dy dynamic dating standards nowadays, right? Um, so if you're only into dating a particular aspect of person and that's all, maybe you don't actually have the intention of dating that person. I'm not even really surprised when people only have a particular genre of individual that they date. Um, like I said, I'm not like specifically targeting black ladies. I think I'm an inadvertent snow bunny at this point, but I'm not surprised that she's only dated, uh, gym bros. Uh, granted, I've had uh, my fair share of like awesome relationships. I really can't even deny that. And for the most part, whenever I would ask some of these men, like why, you know, they would like date plus size women and like, you know, things like that. The one guy gave me basically the explanation of uh, he likes the fact that like his hard body rubs against my soft body. I don't know if that was like a kink of his and the other one would say things. It's okay to have kinks. Like I'm not here... Look, it's fine to have kinks and weird things, but if you're going into the relationship with the idea that the reason why you like this person is because their body is shaped in a particular way, that's okay to a certain degree. Like, you should find the person that you're with attractive. Don't get me wrong. You should find the person that you're with attractive, and you should be trying to make them more attractive. And if you're that person that you're dating somebody and they go, hey – I really like it when you wear this particular type of clothing. I really like it when you emphasize your body in this particular way. That's okay to emphasize your body in that way, right? Like, I know when I'm dating somebody and they go, hey, I like it when you do this. I like it when you wear that. I like it when you wear this color. I'm okay with wearing that color. I'm okay with wearing pants like that. I'm okay with styling my mustache like that. It's fine. Like, to me, 
I want to appease the person that I'm with. I don't care what everybody else wants. I want to impress you. I want to make sure you find me attractive, right? So I'm going to do stuff to make myself more attractive to you because ultimately it's all relative. It is for the person that you're with. So you should want to be more attractive to the person that you're with to a certain degree. Obviously, if that person goes, hey, it would be really cool if you could, I don't know, just walk outside with a whole bunch of like burger patties on your head today like you know obviously don't do that unless you're really into the guy in that case i mean sure go ahead but it might be a little bit weird because pigeons don't like that i mean they do like it but you know what i'm talking about so when i hear people saying things like this i always think it's probably a red flag but i don't know why people say this is not a red flag doesn't mean end the relationship it just means something to be aware of things might change later on like because usually when people go into relationships it is with the idea that this person looks very very good right that's usually what gets you in the door okay, you're really attractive, I like the way you look, let's date, okay? And then usually what happens in the first two, three, four weeks, maybe a month, two months in, something happens, maybe there's a bypass, maybe you learn something about somebody because you don't know who that person is when you first meet them and you're not gonna know who that person is probably by that first month. It's probably gonna take you a little bit of time because you start getting to the nitty gritty, maybe that person has walls, maybe that you have to get past those walls, you have to like really, really get embedded into that person to see who they are. And then eventually maybe you discover something. Maybe they're not the person that you once thought they were. Maybe they're not as, you know, nice or something like that. And that's okay. Um, it takes a long time to understand somebody. So going into a relationship with the idea of this person is really hot. And then eventually the background stuff becomes the, the foreground stuff. That's great. But going in a relationship be based off of a fetish is probably not a good idea. Because a fetish <laughs> is not actually anything that you have. It's just... It's just, you know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, I have a foot fetish. Well, a lot of people have foot fetishes. Um, oh, I, I, I like fat girls. Well, a lot of girls are fat, right? It, it, most fetishes are very, very generic. And you don't really need to be a particular individual. Like, if you ever choose to lose weight, what's going to happen? You know? What if you lose weight? Is he going to not be attracted to you anymore? You shouldn't be building a relationship based off of things that are incredibly... Um, changeable. It's just not good. Okay. May, like, don't get me wrong. Foot fetishes are a little bit more, more, more maintainable. And maybe if it's not like, if you're with a guy and it's kind of like, a, you know, Hey, I want to suck on your toes tonight. It's probably not that big of a deal. And if he only wants to do that every few, if you're okay with a guy sucking on your toes all the time, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I just think that sometimes if you're building a relationship based off of like fetishes, probably not the best idea, but maybe eventually if you do, do have a relationship with that person, hopefully it turns into, he likes people my, from what I have like behind that stuff, like my personality, how I communicate, my sense of humor, my, my taste in shows, um, how I love, you know, I want to have kids with him and whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like these things are way more important than the stuff in the, in, in the visual stuff. And don't get me wrong. You should be more physically attractive. You are physically more attractive, but you should be looking at the stuff behind it more. It's about, uh, you just look, um, fertile. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> that. You're not. That is a fucking dude. I'm gonna keep it a buck at you. If you start dating a dude and one of the compliments he gives you is you look fertile, that is a, uh, that might be a game change. I might have to leave. That's a weird ass thing to say. It's about, uh, you just look, um, fertile. <laughs> I kid you not. He will say things like you just look fertile, like you look like the type that can birth my kids and things like that. So I don't know. I, I, I knew a girl that had that kind of thing. She was like, oh, I, I want to I want you to like suck my nipples. And I was like, yeah, no problem. Like, whatever. I don't care. I'll suck nipples. And she was like, but I want to like breastfeed you. And I was like, uh, yeah, all right, cool. Like, that's fine. Like, I'm not sure. It's another word for sucking boobs, right? All right, cool. I don't have a problem with it. But then she said. I want to like cuddle you up and I want you to be like on my arms. And I was like, I'm a grown man with a mustache. Like, what are you talking about right now? What, what are you into? Right? Like, what are you into right now? And she was like, I, I really wish I could like lactate. So that way I can like feed you. And I was like, ah, oh, man, I don't know. Like it kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And then I was just kind of like, eventually at first it was okay. Cause like, I'm totally fine with it. No problem. But then eventually it turns into like, I want to actually, I want you to be my baby and I want you to like suckle on my boobs. And I'm just thinking like, dude, I'm, you know, I gotta, I gotta go fucking work, dude. What are you fucking talking? I got a mustache. Like I'm a grown man. Like this shit is all weird. And eventually I had to stop talking to that girl because that's not something I'm into. Like I'm not here. Like she wanted me to like dress up like a baby. I don't, you might be asking Dave, what does that even mean? Diaper, bonnet, you know? I don't know. Like, I'm not into it personally. It's not me. <laughs> yeah, if you're into that, fine. But uh, I'm not. So, 
<laughs> Honestly, I don't know. From like a woman's perspective, I would also like to know. Can like, but like, don't get me wrong. Like, if I met somebody and it was just purely about sex, but for me personally, I don't really care about sex very much. And maybe if I'm like in my earlier years, in my twenties, my earlier twenties, maybe I really cared about sex. But nowadays, I don't really care about it too much. Um, I mean, it's cool. Like, you should want to have sex with the person that you're with. But personally speaking, I'm not really into casual sex with with people. I'm more monogamous. I like having the communication. I like having the person that I'm with. I like, like, I'm a big fan of having back and forths and communications like that. So I need to be actually like engaged with you in order for me to have proper satisfaction. Don't get me wrong. Vagina is cool from like ordinary people, fine. But I find more satisfaction from vagina with people and strictly vagina. I know there's a lot of people that think like, David, I know you suck dick. I don't suck dick, okay? Under the right circumstances, I think most people would though. Um, and there's nothing wrong with indulging in the male anatomy when it comes to your mouth. There's nothing wrong with that, personally speaking. Um, I'm a virgin, though, when it comes to my mouth penetration and also my anal penetration, so I'm going to hopefully keep it that way for the rest of my life, but if the right circumstances did arise and maybe Jeff Bezos or, like, another multi-billionaire came up to me and offered me, I don't know, like, Amazon Prime for, like, six months for free or something like that, maybe I'd take him up on the offer depending on how many inches I was going to be receiving in my mouth or something like that, I don't know, but uh, it would just depend. Some gym rats, please duet this or stitch this and just answer us. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so I have purposely stayed out of the discourse on this video because I'm not going to change all minds, but this is simply just not true. And also, it, all it does is show me how you feel about fat people. So, you're being loud. Let's talk dating okay, sentences. Okay, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Gym bros date plus size women so they feel better about their own bodies in contrast to them. Um, gym bros date plus size women, but they already have a pretty good body, right? If you're going to the gym and you've been working out consistently, like obviously if you're a gym bro, that means you have a pretty decent understanding of like body bodies. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't agree with this. Actually. Yeah, I think fatty. she's right about this. So you're being loud. Let's talk dating Sunday. Today's the day of the year that most people are joining dating apps. All of dating apps have done studies that today, January 7th, people are most active from 7 to 10 p.m. And that's when you'll get the most responses. If you've been off dating- I didn't know there was like a holiday for dating apps, dude. <laughs> this is news to me. Apps for a while like me, building a profile as a plus size person can be a little scary. I don't know why I hear this. I This, this is something I hear echoed quite a bit in the plus size community of like, I don't know if he knows I'm fat. Like, how do I know if I'm catfishing this guy? And the fact that this is even an issue to begin with should automatically tell you that there's something wrong within the dating market. I've been catfished a few different times, but um, eventually you learn from your mistakes. You know, somebody that only has face pictures and doesn't have any, uh, you know, social media is linked and things such and so forth. Like, it's probably a red flag. But if when it comes to dating apps, right, it's very simple. Forget about the forget about the 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 whole paragraphs that you're gonna write about yourself. Nobody cares about that shit. I'd better it'd be better if I actually asked you questions myself and then I discovered them on my own. Just keep it ambiguous. Have good pictures of yourself, preferably full body pictures. Probably have somebody take pictures of them for you, you know, yourself. Or if you don't have somebody around you, because I know a lot of people nowadays are antisocial and we don't have friends, you can prop up your phone somewhere and hopefully somebody doesn't come by and snag your phone. Um, take a picture of yourself, doing a pose, put your leg up, like you know how girls do if you're a guy, do like this, you know? You know how guys, when they take pictures of themselves, they do like one of these, you know what I'm saying? Like one of these, like, yeah, I'm black, I'm black. Or um, if you're a white dude, I guess you go like this, like, you know, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of pictures that you could do as a guy. I don't know. Whatever. But the point I'm making is have a few pictures of yourself. Have like one selfie. Have a, the rest of the pictures of yourself in different settings, different wardrobes. Don't have the same picture. And if you're a guy, this is really, really important. You cannot take pictures down here. Like, I don't know why so many dudes like look at the phone like this and they're taking a picture of themselves down here. That's not a good angle. It's not a good angle. It's not a good angle. I get it. You're a dude. You only take like one picture a month, but you need to actually try. There are a couple of things you can do to give yourself some peace of mind when you're building your profile. I like to show full body photos and How long does it take to build a fucking profile, dude? Maybe like 10 minutes? What do you mean? Like, what are you going through like PTSD from building a profile? Bullet angles, just so there aren't any questions. And what's great about certain apps is you can put videos. I have a friend who likes to post photos with her other straight size friends. I also know people who like to put a disclaimer that they're plus size or fat. I personally don't think that's necessary. Yeah, that's crazy as fuck, but like disclaimer, I'm fat as fuck. That shit is crazy. Just remember that you're amazing. You have so much to offer, way more than what you look like.
True, but the looks are going to get you in the door, okay? We live in a very, very physical, you know, uh, first impressions really matter. You should try to try your best to look as best as you possibly can. And don't get me wrong, if you're losing weight and you're in the process of losing weight, get out there. Date. It's okay to date, right, while you're losing weight. Um, know what you have to offer, right? Be aware of what you bring to the table. Um, don't just – I know a lot of people, and I've met, I've, I've met a lot of women that think this way. They think they are the table, which is incredible. That's not how that fucking works, dude. No. Um, know what you bring to the table. Know what you have to offer. And, you know, rep that, dude. Say what your whole chest, right? Um, but also be working under the understanding that physical appearances are going to get you in the door. They're going to do a lot for you. So you should be emphasizing them as much as possible. And this goes for men and women, of course. Like, brush your teeth. Shave. You know what I'm saying? Comb your hair. Get a haircut. Like, <laughs> wash your clothes. These things are super important to women, guys but also you're gorgeous True. and that there's somebody out there for everybody and you're a person. I don't like this idea of so there's somebody out there for everybody is also, that's not true. It's not true. It's not true. I don't know how many times I can say this. It's not true. There isn't somebody for everybody. People die alone. And if you are working off the idea that there is somebody for everybody, what happened to the people that have never been in relationships for their entire life, that never have sex, that never engage in any type of conversations with women or men, like these people, did they have somebody for them? Oh, they do. But what the fuck happened to them? You know what happens? Is that even if there was somebody out there for you, you just never took the chances or whatever? It's not the case, okay? Stop stop playing the lottery when it comes to dating, okay? Be as attractive as you possibly can and then open up the funnel and then have people funnel in and then you choose who and when you want to date them. You understand? That's much better than just hoping one day that somebody's going to find you and think that you're beautiful because you're fat and, you know, that's, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. No, don't do that. No, that is, that is crazy. No, open, become more attractive and this goes for like every aspect of you you could be more physically attractive um if you're not like the most physically attractive that's okay you can still do a lot of things to make yourself way more attractive right like i said things before like getting a haircut and stuff like that and also you can do other things like for instance make more money be better in social situations i don't know get, get a sense of humor emphasize the things that you already have there are plenty of ways to mid max yourself to make yourself more attractive to the general public. And don't feel bad that you want to date somebody. I know a lot of people think that it's weird that they want to have, be in relationships. It's not weird. It's completely fine to share your life with another person as long as they compliment you and you're going in with the right intentions. A lot of people go into relationships with the idea of that person needs to be there in everything. That's not the case. Don't think that somebody needs to be everything. It's okay if that person is missing certain things that you wanted as long as they're making it up in other places, right? Not everybody's going to be perfect and that's okay. That's what makes them so great is that they might be missing features that you don't like and then you realize you like the features that they have and that's amazing right so when you're going into relationships just have an open mind and um also it's okay if the person's not the best looking because they might have other features about them that are really 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 um attractive to you it's gonna like you exactly how you look no no because like maybe okay look you might find a guy that does like you exactly the way that you look which is fine um, if you're a very pretty person you're a very handsome guy i'm sure maybe but for most people with this idea of like you're perfect or you're beautiful exactly the way you are, all you're telling these people to do is to never change. Because if it ain't broke, why would you fix it? And then when I hear people say this thing, right? When I hear people say this idea of like you're perfect exactly the way you are, whatever the fucking bullshit is. If somebody is genuinely having problems and they're actually never having like – they're, they're never getting somebody to be in a relationship with them. They're not getting positive attention or whatever the hell. And you tell them, right? This person's going, I, I can't, girls don't want to date me. I, I, you know, they never hit me up. They never get the, the text back or whatever the fuck. Um, I'm a virgin. I'm 25, whatever the fuck, right? And then you go, it's okay. You're perfect exactly the way you are. Somebody's going to love you exactly the way you are. That person's going to look at you and go, okay, well then fuck you. You didn't help me out at all. Like, what, that is not going to help me. That person's going to be continuously depressed. You didn't actually say anything to them of value. Matter of fact, you probably just made their life worse because you're just reinforcing that the fact that everything they're doing right now isn't working. It's not working, right? So if it's not working and you tell that person that they're perfect or they're good exactly what they are, you're actually hurting them. It's not a good idea to say that, okay? There is better information that you can give to that person. Maybe get a haircut. Maybe work on yourself. Go to the fucking gym. I don't know. There's a ton of things that people can do that you would have to orient towards them. You understand? And I'm not saying that you need to be the person that needs to do that, but oftentimes people give out the worst fucking information. And don't get me wrong. This information is not inherently bad information. It's just bad given the context of the conversation. If you say that you're perfect exactly whether you are, I'm sure that a lot of people can find value in that. But it's ultimately meaningless given the fact that there are people that have actual problems in the dating market. And then telling them, and then also 
to top it off. This is a TikTok made for the general public. People are going to watch this and they're going to they're going to use this as advice. And when they take this as advice, they're going to think about it. OK, and they're going to deduce that it's bullshit information because what they're doing right now isn't working. And you're just reinforcing the bullshit that they have to go through. You understand? So generally speaking, if it's not working for you, you need to fix something. OK, usually it's you. It's not the other person. Most of the time, if you're in dating markets and you're like let's say for you're, you're a woman and you're overweight and you're you're going on dates and guys aren't texting you back and guys aren't receiving you well and things such and so forth. Um, it's okay. Think about it. Reflect. What am I doing wrong? Is it could it be do, could it have something to do with the weight? Probably lose some weight. This goes for guys and girls. Girls don't want to date guys with big bellies. If you're having sex with a girl and you have a big gut, you have to drop it on their back. That's not good. What are you gonna like? physically induce scoliosis upon this woman because you thought that it'd be a good idea to have sex with her? No. And you probably have a very bad smelling penis as well because I know you don't wash it properly. Guys in general don't wash properly. So, you know, look at me. I don't even wash my legs. You think you think fat men are washing their penises? No, they're not. So if you're a guy, wash yourself, take care of yourself. These things are super attractive to women. If you're a woman, lose some weight. I don't know, become more sociable. I don't know, be nicer sometimes because sometimes women are very, very intimidating. A lot of guys look at women and they think they're like, I don't know, goddesses or um, they're going to be mean girls. And that might be a, a, that might be a trait that you have. I don't know. There are tons of things that you can do, but losing weight most definitely will help if you're fat. Somebody out there for everybody and your person is going to like you exactly how you look, exactly for who you are. Terrible and make sure terrible advice, by the way, you're swiping on people you find interesting and are attracted to. I don't know the case for women. I don't know the case for women when it comes to dating apps. Guys, just swipe. Just swipe right on every single person all day long until they can't swipe right anymore. Um, and they like it purposely like I induce like cerebral palsy on their hands or um, they, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like they're just sitting there swiping all day. And because they've been swiping for so long, you take away the phone and they're still swiping like muscle memory type of shit. I don't know how it is for women. I know that women actually do swipe left, but for guys, this is bad information. You might as well just swipe right on everybody. You don't got time. Fuck it. This is what I would say for probably everybody, actually. Just swipe right on everybody. And eventually, when you do get that like back, because it is what it is, you're eventually going to get one. If they message you or you can now open up and message them, you can decide whether or not you want to message them. You understand? I don't know. That's what, that, that would be my advice. Dating apps. I love getting comments like these from people. I hope it's not dinner date. Man can go broke. <laughs> That's tough, dude. Damn, bro. That's tough because she's so fat. She's going to body slam the restaurant. <laughs> it's crazy. People who just assume that I would have been going out with a man. Men are gross. Why would I want to do Whoa. Listen, speaking as a man myself, I can actually assure you we are gross. That's okay, though. It's fine. But I know the way she was using it in a derogatory sense. Listen, you guys leak from your vagina once a month and you guys also have weird stuff that goes on there, too. And you guys argue about things that don't even make sense. You know, like, hey, does this look good on me? Yeah, it looks good. Mm, but that one day you said it didn't look good on me. I know, but that one day you were wearing something else underneath it and then it didn't kind of match and the pants didn't really look good. So you don't think the so you think the pants look good on this day? Yeah, they look fine. Mm, but like what shoes? What shoes should I wear? I guess the ones you're wearing. No, you're just saying that because of the ones I'm wearing. You need to actually look at all the shoes that I'm wearing. Um, I don't know. Can we do this later? Cause like I'm kind of busy. No, we can't do this later because I need to do this right now and I'm going somewhere two days from now. I need to have my wardrobe set right now. It's like, I, what are you doing? Jesus Christ, you know? Um, so you guys have problems too, okay? I know that sometimes guys can be emotional bricks but uh, sometimes you guys are ridiculous. Do that. Um, and this person also went on to say, oh, thank God I took myself out and paid for it because it would have cost this person a mortgage payment. Jeez, <laughs> damn, a mortgage payment to take a woman out to eat? Damn. Listen, my bill, all in, including a tip, was under $60. That's crazy. Where the fuck did you go? Where did you go out to eat? Where that For yourself? This, this is not a good case for you, dude. Are you serious? Where the fuck did you go? You, 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 under $60? How much under $60? It couldn't have been under $50 because if it was under $50, you would have said under $50. So that gives me the impression that it's probably $55 or more dollars because I feel like you would have mentioned the amount of money if it was, a, if it was a low, if it was below the $50, $55. So it had to have been something, I'm guessing. 59 58 dollars something like that that is ridiculous for one person where do you guys do you guys just have unlimited money how do you how can you just go out to eat drop down a 60 dollars on the table for yourself 
and think that's okay. No, that guy was right about that mortgage payment, dude. That's crazy, man. That's insane. Uh, that was an appetizer. I knew it. I knew I knew it was an appetizer. What, what, what you get, huh? What kind of appetizer? You get the, the spring rolls, huh? You get a little bit of nacho cheese on that? What, what did you get? Sir. A meal. Okay. And a dessert. I knew, man, dude, this is, that's crazy, bro. I don't know about you guys. If I'm going out to eat, which I rarely do, it's like a once a year thing, like an actual restaurant. I'm never getting appetizers. Why the fuck am I getting an appetizer? It's going to spoil the meal. I'm never getting dessert. That shit's literally like thousands of calories in some cases, depending on what you get. And I'm getting water because water, oh, and coffee. I'll get coffee depending on where I'm at. Sometimes they'll have okay coffee or they'll give you like a really gay cup where you have to go like this when you drink it. I'm not drinking. Your cups are way too small. And um, I'm just eating the meal. So, I mean, I understand. I understand. Now, maybe you're different. Maybe you're different. Maybe in your scenario, you will order the appetizer and things like that. Maybe I'm just weird. But in my scenarios and whenever I've went on dates with women and stuff like that, uh, I've never met a woman that actually did want the appetizer. I've never. And then also dessert because usually women that I date are very, very health conscious and they know these things as well. Plus my drink. And my drink was a ginger ale. So, like, I wasn't soda. really uh, going all out there. What do you I mean going all out. That's going all out. An appet Dude, you ordered literally the entire thing. You got the appetizer, the meal, and the dessert, and then you got a soda. That shit was probably, that shit was probably crazy calories. And that included a generous 20%. That is a crazy tip, man. You gotta go, listen, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. You gotta go out to eat with black guys. I remember one time I went out with my, 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 my best friend, who's a black guy, right? And I remember, I don't know what we had ordered, right? And you know me, I was like, I don't know how much my bill was. Let's say 20 bucks. I was like, ah, let me, I'll just tip her like two bucks or something like that. I was broke, right? Listen, tipping already is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm tipping, right? So I'm giving her $2. And I remember my friend, he had only card. He was paying for his bill because we split it. And he had put down, like, I remember, look, he, he put zero tip, right? It said zero, zero dot zero one. And I was like, what are you tipping? He said, I'm tipping that bitch a penny. And I was like, what? I was like, what do you mean a penny? He's like, bro, I don't give a fuck, bro. I'm black. We don't tip. And I was like, bro, that's crazy, bro. And he tipped a penny. Can you believe that? And uh, I remember we had left. And I was talking to him like a few days later. I was like, bro, did she? Because on the card, you could see when they take off the tip. And he was like, that bitch didn't even take out the penny. I mean, I wouldn't either, dude. What is a fucking penny going to do? But I don't know, man. I mean, think about this, right? If I'm a black guy, I'll probably tip a penny too. Maybe I am a black guy. Who knows, dude? I got that black girl magic every single day in my life. So. Plus tip. So. <laughs> plus tip sounds crazy. That sounds like a plus tip sounds like a porn star. Doesn't it? Man, dude. Plus tip sounds crazy. Like, yeah. Oh, man. Think about this. Think about this, right? Can you imagine if you had the dynamic duo in a porn industry, right? Two dudes. This dude's shaft and this dude's plus tip. Oh, man. That would be crazy. You got a guy named Shaft and Tip? Man, that would be crazy. You know, I am a great date to myself. Sounds sad as shit to go on a date by yourself, dude. That sounds sad. Am I wrong? That sounds really fucking sad to go out on a dinner date by yourself. I would really want to, listen, it's not if you want to go to the movies by yourself or spend some time by yourself, it's fine. I'm not shitting on this woman for doing that. I would love to know why she chose to do it. Um, can, do you just not have relationships? Do you just want to do it because you were bored or whatever the hell? I don't know. It's, you know, to me, it just seems a little bit sad, but for her, it might be okay. Because I can probably, like, I can pretty much guarantee that if I'd gone out with a man. Why do you keep saying it like that? Why, you know, like, it's fine if you want to be a lesbian, like, go ahead and be a lesbian. Why are you shitting on dudes though? Yeah, you know, whatever. Because I can probably, like, I can pretty much guarantee that if I'd gone out with a man um, and he was the one paying, I'd have to check the receipt afterwards just to make sure he left a tip at all. What are you saying? What do you, what do you, why do you care? First of all, if you're not paying for the meal, what the fuck? Like, are you going to antagonize a guy because he didn't pay for a tip? What the fuck you, what, okay. All right, whatever, dude. What, I don't know what she's, I don't know what she's trying to say there. Like, are you going to tell that guy, like, you didn't leave a tip? Like, what you talk about? The bill was like $200. You know, it was 60 bills for you alone. The fuck you want? What are some weirdly specific things that you consider to be red flags in men? Not washing. I don't know. Like for guys, for guys, I feel like red flags would be not having the ability to have conversations when needed to have conversations 
Um, probably things like not shaving very often. Maybe, I don't know, actually. Leave it down below. What are some red flags in men? Red flags in women for me since I've only ever dated women. I don't date men. I'm not gay. Probably would be um, texting like four or five times in a row, asking me where I'm at always, asking me why I'm not texting them back, call, being called back, um, emailed, you know, you emailed me, things like that. Those are red flags for me. Men who are rude to fat women or traditionally unattractive women. Let me explain. As a fat woman, a lot of time, guys will come up to my friends and I and will flirt with my thinner friends. That's really sad, dude. I hear I hear these people say the saddest stuff and they just completely gloss by it as if it's normal. Like if you're out with your friends and every time you go out with your friends, you never get interactions with men and you your friends who are thinner than you always get interactions with men. And then I hear these people complain about that. They go, I don't know why men don't, don't approach me. But then you're seeing that men approach your friends who are thinner why don't you ever connect the dots and go, hmm, I wonder if this has anything to do with me being over overweight or fat or or obese. Has that never occurred to you that maybe this, this might be a debuff? Maybe this might be repellent to men? I don't know. I don't know. Because like, maybe I would, I, I think I'm connecting the dots for you here. I'm thinking that maybe it is actually a problem. And that's fine. But the way that they interact with me... It's not fine. It's not fine. It's not. It's not fine, okay? I'm going to keep it a buck. Maybe you're one of these women. Maybe you're a woman that doesn't like it when men interact with you, which is fine. But within the scenario that this woman is listing, which is every time we go out together, me and my girlfriends, and they're thinner than me, I never get approached by men, and they do. That is not a good thing by virtue because you are literally repelling the men. You understand that? Like, okay, well, that's all I'm going to say. Tells me every single thing I need to know about them. If they acknowledge my presence, you know, say hello, whatever, chill. I don't know. I don't usually go to clubs. I don't, I, I don't go to bars. I don't drink. I don't do any of that stuff, right? I always try to acknowledge everyone no matter where I'm at. So, like, if we are having a conversation, let's say, for instance, there's three people in a group, okay? And I'm having a conversation with this other individual, and it seems to be engaging back and forth between me and that other individual. I will always always, always interact with the other person to ensure that they feel included within whatever conversation that is because I know I've been in scenarios where I was that third person and it was awkward and I don't know like if I was even you know, invited into this conversation. It seems like I shouldn't even be here. So I'm always going to interact with the other person, right? But I don't think that everybody's going to be like that. It's okay if you're not like that, by the way. If you're only interested in one person, you want to talk to that one person, you could just say a passing like, oh, how are you doing? And then move on to that person because ultimately that's what you're interested in, right? It's okay. Don't feel bad for doing that. But so many times they won't even look me in the eye. They will talk to my friends and pretend like I'm not there. And that in Looking somebody in the eye also is like, I don't care. What does that even mean? Like if somebody looks in the eye, first of all, this guy is probably attracted to your friend. Why would he, why would it matter if he's looking you in the eye? Okay. They won't even look me in the eye. They will talk to my friends and pretend like I'm not there. And that immediately tells me. But what does your friend do though? Like, uh, I would, I would very much enjoy to know what your friends are doing. Cause if your friends were real friends, they would be incorporating you in the conversation. Or if you were a real friend, then you would maybe let them have the time if you knew that they was going to work out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think sometimes being the best wingman is just letting that person talk to that other person, if that makes any sense. Ejecting yourself from the conversation, you know, because you being there might actually be the reason why that person doesn't get dicked down or have a relationship because you're interfering or maybe you're, you know what I'm saying? You might actually be the blockade within the question. And if they want to get penis or they want to indulge in vagina or whatever it may be, and both parties are consenting, sometimes you might be the cock block and it might be okay to acknowledge that. Look, that person doesn't respect me. So why would you think that person doesn't respect you by not talking to you? Why would you even assume that? It, this uh, is stretching. It's just stretching, dude. It's such a niche scenario as well. There. And that immediately tells me. They're just not interested in you. They're just not interested in you, dude. Like, would you be offended if you were selling like, I don't know, sausages at the grocery store and there was another sausage that was like, I don't know, better quality and that sausage was also cheaper. And then you, the guy or whoever it was, looked at your sausages and then looked back at these other sausages and picked up those sausages. Would you feel upset by that? I'm not comparing it to a piece of meat. I'm just saying in this hypothetical scenario, why would you assume that person doesn't respect you? It may not even be about you in general. Like you do understand that, right? Okay, whatever, man. So that person doesn't respect me. So men who don't respect women, they don't find fuckable. 
um they don't respect women it's it's just it's just so much projection right here dude i why would you why are you going like that like why are you going down this particular line of he doesn't respect me therefore you shouldn't date this particular individual guy i don't even know if this has anything to do with respect maybe he's just interested in your friend maybe he just doesn't want to talk to you maybe you're just not interesting to him why does it have to do with respect what are you talking about like straight up they do not respect women i don't know about that i don't know about that that's got to sweat that's 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 quite a stretch um because if they don't respect a woman they're not attracted to then they're just trying to be kind to you because they want to get into your pants dude first of all okay first of all dude you should assume 99 percent of the time if a guy's approaching you he does want to get in your pants i remember somebody saying this recently they're like ladies if if a man approaches you period he's trying to smash and i'm just thinking yeah i mean obviously especially in these particular settings it's fucking obvious it's such a basic thing to say like obviously but I don't think, I think women automatically know this though. I don't think it's something to even touch on. Like it's obvious, right? But that doesn't mean that there's more to it. You know, maybe you, you do want to have sex with this person, which is fine. It's a basic human instinct, right? But that doesn't mean that you don't have the right intentions behind it. Maybe you do want to get to know that person. Maybe you want to work for it more, right? I always tell people don't give up vagina because ultimately um, if the guy just gets vagina, he might just use you and abuse you and then leave you in the dust or whatever. So I always think, wait, um, you know, give the guy some time to marinate a little bit, see if he's actually going to stay with you, wait a week, wait two weeks, wait three weeks, go on dates, things such and so forth, figure out if this guy's cool or not like this, right, whatever. This only really applies to men. Uh, I'm sorry, this only really applies to women since men are, you know, whatever, men are going to have sex with like cardboard boxes that are in the shape of like a vagina if they if they're like wet cardboards that's been left outside and like the you know i've been you know sometimes you look outside and you see that wet cardboard and you're like i don't know it might be all right it might be okay to slide one in you don't know or exhaust pipes or something like that um but i think that if you're if you're telling me that you think these guys are, like don't respect women because they're not talking to you why would you think of that? That is so weird. That is such a weird. I would just really love to poke these people's brains and figure out why they think the way that they think. Because I understand it in a very general sense. Like you think because if they're not acknowledging you as the person in the room who is the more unattractive person, therefore, if they cannot respect you, that somehow that is going to deem that if they're in a relationship with this person or interact with this person, by default, they're going to be less valuable because they didn't interact with you. I understand it. And it's crazy that I can articulate your your particular points better than you. But that doesn't always mean anything. That doesn't that doesn't insignify that that person doesn't respect women because they didn't talk to you. Maybe just didn't want to talk to you. All right, whatever, man. If you have a fat friend and she gets bad vibes from a guy, listen to her. She is right. That's not, this is not a good advice. Not good advice. You know how many times I've talked to women? Dude, look, okay. One thing I know for sure is that women have better conversations than men. They have more meaningful conversations. They can talk better than men. Men conversations, guys, guys having conversations with each other are usually meaningless conversations. Like I could talk to my friend for four hours about a camera. You know, I can, it'd be easy to, and it'd be great. I would love it. It would be so awesome to talk to my friend for four hours about a camera. But women talk about more things that are in depth, right? They actually talk about things that are of value. And I'm not saying that I'm not getting value from talking to my friend about the camera, but it's different. And when women have conversations with women, it's it's like deep and detailed and things such and so forth. But sometimes women can be very, very um, they can be so vindictive, dude, and they can say things that are so incredibly terrible, right? They can say some terrible, disgusting, backhanded things about you and maybe talk behind your back. I'm not saying guys can't do this either, but I'm getting to a point here. Women are probably better to have conversations with, but a lot of times women will backslide you or they'll be really shady with you. Whereas for men, it's like a one you, you it's like a one size fits all type of thing. Like you know, the guy's probably not gonna talk shit about you. But you're not really ever going to have a conversation of value with this guy. Not all the time. Not all the time. Right? Not all the time. But in a general speaking sense, usually it's like the, it's like a double-edged sword. Like you might have these really great detailed conversations, but they also might backslam you, right? Dude, they might say something and they might purposely try to sabotage you. I've met so many really, really, really pretty girls that tell me this consistently where they go, I don't like hanging out with girls 
because it kind of seems like it's always a competition because I'm so pretty and they feel like they have to keep one upping me or they have to think that you know that really emphasize the fact that they're prettier than me or that I don't know what I'm doing or something so like they feel like they're competing with them and they don't like that and I've never had to deal with that with my guy friends ever like ever in my entire life it's not even something I can even recognize right and also I've had girlfriends too like girls that were friends and I've never had to deal with that also because it's like what did we, we weren't competing for dudes right so it, it was hard for me to understand what they were talking about, like, what do you mean competing? Like, what do you, because she was so pretty and these other girls felt threatened by that. And like, but sometimes they have really great conversations. And I understand that could be really, really tough. You know, that could be really, really tough. So sometimes, sometimes, not all the time. I think it's something to be aware of though. When you're with groups of girls that are your friends, it, it would be better sometimes. Now, if you know this person is like a really, really good friend, maybe it's fine. But maybe give that person a little bit of doubt when that person says this guy is not good for you why why do you think that why would you think that because some girls will purposely sabotage perfectly good relationships they will throw the wrench into your relationship because they'll just say shit i've heard it so many times he's not good for you he's not he's not good enough for you oh my god he's emotionally abusing you he's doing this and this and this and then these girls are perpetually single i've seen so many times this has happened dude it's just it's just crazy to me sometimes I listen to these these conversations and I hear them like I remember being in relationships and my girlfriend would say something like my friends just think that you're just like a bum and you're, you're not doing this and yeah you don't have money and you don't have this and I'm like what why would your friends say that like I've I've only ever been nice to these people all the time and I don't know like they just I, maybe they just feel bad because these girls have never been in relationships or maybe they're very sparsely in relationships maybe they just they envy something and i'm not saying all women but it's like it's so crazy the amount of times that i've been in different relationships and had the friend say something or do something or say something not all the time but it's crazy to me and i never had that scenario when i talk to guys like if you talk to a guy about your girlfriend most of the time they'll go oh yeah bro i hope she's treating you right like she's a good girl whatever right most guys don't really even care like most dudes are not really putting a lot of value into that shit um because like i said like a lot of the conversations and don't get me wrong you could have long in-depth conversations with your guy friends i'm not saying you can't but most of the time with guys it's more general conversations if that makes any sense this was long-winded but i hope i got to the baseline on that i do not think that because somebody is fat that that is an indicator that they somehow they have like a sixth sense to know whether or not this guy is not good or not i don't i don't agree with that does he know that I'm not skinny? Who else feels like this question alone takes away the excitement when it comes to dating? Because for me, it does. The most common way to meet people these days is dating apps. Like that happens more often than meeting someone out in the wild. The when fact that you're even questioning whether or not he thinks you're fat is a problem. You shouldn't ever have to go into a relationship and wonder or like go into a, a particular conversation and go, I wonder if he knows that I'm big bellied. It's not good, okay? Fix your profile if this is a problem someone in person this thought does not even cross my mind but when someone is coming from online i feel like this question totally takes over i think it takes away the excitement because instead of initially matching with someone thinking they're cute liking talking to them instead of like focusing on that i'm focusing on does he know i'm not skinny i have full body photos on you just lose weight okay i don't know these people are literally consistently talking about these problems and i always think I would, I would never want to deal with this. Like, why are these issues that you guys have when you can just not have them be issues? You could just lose weight at any point and not have this be a problem. And they just consume these people's lives. Like, I've heard, I've heard this particular argument so many times, but from this particular individual, it seems to be on the forefront of her mind consistently. If you don't know the lore behind this person, the fact that I even know this lore is concerning, I know. But never dated, 30 plus, and uh, never had a boyfriend, never. And all she can ever talk about is the inability for her to acquire a mate when that's all she ultimately ever wants. And she's always complaining about the fact that she's fat and she can't find a boyfriend. And the dudes just seem to be repelled to her, repelled by her because of her weight, which I mean might be true. But ultimately what I find is that a lot of the women that I hear say this stuff, it's not really ever – I mean the weight is a problem, but – it's the mentality, dude. It's the way these women think. And I'm not strictly saying women because there are a lot of men out there that think like this too as well. But we're talking about women particularly right here right now. Um, these women have the worst mentalities, dude. Incel men, 
femme cell women. These women are literally femme cells. The way they think about relationships, the way they think about men, the way they think about like interacting with men is crazy, bro. They're so entitled. They think that they have like free reign to whatever they want. And whenever a guy doesn't want them, somehow they get, they get so offended. They get so mad. They get so upset. Like they think they're like the best person on the planet. When in reality, it's like, dude, you're like everybody else, but you're just fat. Obviously it's not going to be a good thing. And plus, again, the way you're thinking about this shit is terrible. And these people will literally have these problems for years or even decades, 30 years, a decade plus of having this issue and do nothing. And you'll have people literally telling them how to solve their problems, but they never take it. Goes in one year, comes out the next year. Terrible. On all of my dating apps. And I do try to get the guy to follow me on Instagram, add me on Snapchat. And still the question lives rent free in my brain. I almost get to this point where I'm like, oh, like I don't even want them to like ask me on a date. I don't want to hang out with them because- You see, like these are all extraordinary red flags. Like if I was talking to a girl and she was saying this shit, know what you bring to the table. Uh, the amount of people that I've met that completely devalue themselves and it's a complete turn off. Like if you, hear me out on this. If you're dating a guy, cause I know I, Put, I'll put this in scenario. If you're dating a guy and you're a woman, it is the most unattractive thing in the world if a guy says, oh, you're just so so much smarter than me. You're so much prettier than me. Like you're just, you know, you're so much, ah, oh, you know, what do I got? You know, things like that. That is gross. Stop devaluing yourself. Stop throwing yourself under the bus to try to ev elevate a woman. That is crazy. A woman doesn't want to hear you say that shit. She wants you to be secure within yourself. That is a crazy ass thing to say. Don't get me wrong. If you have insecurities, there's nothing wrong with having insecurities. But the fact that so many people are literally sabotaging themselves by thinking that they're going to throw somebody up by throwing themselves down is the worst thing you can do. This works for men and women. It is the most unattractive thing in the world to tell a person that you think you are lesser than them. You should know what you bring to the table and emphasize that. That person that you're with does not want to hear you saying how terrible you are. Talk about the good stuff. Talk about how amazing you are, right? I can do this. I can do that. Like I said, it's fine if you have insecurities. It's not a good idea to talk about those insecurities while telling that other person they're so much better than you. That's gross. Never going to work. Then I'm going to have to face, you know, this fear. And I know a lot of people do say that they let the guy know up front, like, hey, you know, like, I'm not a skinny girl. Well, I think That's also something that I would, dude, if I'm dating a girl and she automatically hits me with a debuff of like, hey, just to let you know, I'm big as fuck. I'm going to be looking at that girl like, okay, well, the fact that you even told me that is concerning. You must be way bigger than I thought you were, given the fact that you're telling me you're literally big this is a good idea and probably works for someone for me it feels like if i say that i'm leaning into that insecurity when yeah i mean you're le what's interesting about this woman is that she talks about like it, i agree it's leaning into an insecurity about you being overweight you're making a TikTok talking about it currently if you date anybody in your life in your life do you not think that they click on your instagram and they go oh this girl has this Instagram with a lot of followers. Oh, look, she has her TikTok linked. Let me just go ahead and click on that TikTok. Oh, wow. Her whole TikTok is literally riddled with videos after video after video talking about your insecurities, about being fat, about not being able to get men. That is a major red flag. I'm breaking up with you. You are crazy. That is a crazy thing. And the fact that you can sit there and say, I don't want to tell this guy. I don't want to warn him that I'm fat. But you have no problem posting publicly on the internet about all your insecurities for thousands of people to see. Where is the logic? Where did you connect the dot there to make that 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 particular thing validity, but everything else is no. It's interesting. It's real interesting. Guys, I like to come off as confident as possible. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> years like this woman literally has like two plus years of content on her tiktok about how she's not confident but i mean great yeah put on the illusion i'm sure you're full somebody i just like go to war with myself i'm like should i say it should i not say it like i want to say it but i don't want to say it in the past i have said it and guys are like yeah like that's fine and i'm like liar <laughs> liar oh bro you can't tell me that you're trying to be confident and then literally contradict Ooh, it's tough. Like, I don't think he gets it. I just really hate it. I just want to like match with a guy on a dating app, enjoy talking to him and be excited to me instead of just having this like, does he think I'm skinny? She's a walking red flag. Like it's literally, she's a walking red flag. She's literally telling you she's putting on a mask, an illusion to try to convince you that she's a confident individual when in reality, she's literally like questioning everything that she does, how she looks, how you're going to react to her, what you think about her. She's thinking about all this which is not inherently a bad thing, right? I talk to, sometimes I talk to guys and they go, 
ah, oh, man, um, this girl just didn't text me back or this girl doesn't text me back or like, I don't know if she likes me or not. Why are you putting thought into it? It's okay. Like if she doesn't want to date you, she doesn't want to date you. She doesn't want to talk to you. She doesn't want to talk to you. It's fine. Like you'll find somebody else. As long as you're doing what you got to do and you're putting in the right effort, it doesn't matter if this one girl doesn't want to talk to you. It's fine, dude. Even you, Even if you think that she's a great, beautiful, amazing specimen of human being, so what? There are plenty of those people out there and you'll find one eventually. Like if you keep trying and you keep putting yourself out there and you keep you know, putting your best foot forward, it shouldn't, you shouldn't be thinking about that. I used to do that a lot when I was like younger, right? I used to really burden myself with the thought of, oh, what if this person cheats on me? What if I'm not good enough? What if I just don't give her what she needs? Like I need to always be there for her. Fuck that. Do what you have to do, okay? Work on yourself. That person that you're dating or that you want to be in a relationship with should be the icing on the cake of your life. They shouldn't be the cake. You should make your own cake, build your own cake, put in the right ingredients, build your cake up, have it cook in the oven. And then eventually, once you're fully cooked and you've been embellished in the beauty of your Betty Crocker mix fucking cake, then they come through and they coach you, right? That's what you should do. Do not burden yourself with whether or not you think you're inadequate or whatever. If that person cheats on you, they're going to cheat on you. Don't try to like 3D chess that person into never wanting to cheat on you. Because ultimately, if you're thinking about this stuff, this stuff is projected outward, right? Like people are going to see your insecurities regardless of whether or not you're saying it. Energy is energy, right? So don't burden yourself with that shit. And I know it's easier said than done. It took me a little bit of time to realize that myself. Now I don't really even care. Like if I'm dating somebody, they cheat on me. Obviously it's going to suck a lot of dick, but I'm not going to like spend my entire day wondering whether or not that person is or is not going to be faithful or not faithful. It is what it is. You know, be aware of yourself, be aware of what you bring to the table and then work based off of those things. You shouldn't be like, anyway, I don't know. I hope that helps somebody. Enjoy talking to him and be excited to me instead of just having this like does he yeah, this, th this girl also like even though she's 30 and she's older than me, right? I, I think she lacks so much experience when it comes to dating, which makes sense because she's never had a boyfriend before. But it's just like I wish she would listen to other people that have dating experience because usually people that have a little bit more life experience, a little bit more, not all the time. Sometimes you meet somebody that has a lot of life experience and they're dumb, which is fine, but not like what I'm saying is like not all advice is good advice, but I really wish she would find somebody that would have some good advice. She could discern that and try to like learn from that instead of just making these mistakes over and over and over again and projecting outward all these terrible insecurities, literally projecting them on TikTok and other platforms in the back of my head all the time. So yeah, I just wanted to come on here and share that because if this is something you feel like you struggle with when it comes she's to like literally sabotaging herself too, because like if, if she ever does find a guy that what is what she's looking for and a guy really accepts her and all this other stuff, I could not think of a, I could not think of a well-rounded solid minded man dating this woman and then seeing her Instagram, seeing her TikTok, and going, yep, no, this seems fine. I could not think of a single man that would watch any of these TikToks and go, this woman is the right catch. She could be amazing every other aspect, but you see that TikTok, it's going to be like, dude, <laughs> this woman is crazy, dude. You know what I'm talking about? It's not, it's not practical. Online dating. Just know you're not crazy. And as always. Dude, you're crazy. This, everything she just said was insane. I love you guys. Bye. Love you Let's too, talk love you, about love you how too. men treated me while I was fat. I wouldn't fucking know because they didn't interact with me. Damn. Here is a picture of me from four years ago. Not bad. She don't look too bad. Um, she is doing that like face thing where you have to like turn your head a little bit to make sure that you see a little bit of the jawline, even though it's not really a jawline. When I was plus sized throughout my entire college career, I was in a plus size body. It's pretty ironic because a lot of people's college years are their hottest years. I think I look fucking amazing all the goddamn time, but to the general public, I was fat, which made me unattractive, especially to college age men. When I tell you they didn't interact with me, I'm not joking. At that point in my life, I would feel lucky if a man even looked in my direction. Sometimes people find a lot of validation in male attention and i understand it like there is i feel like you just got to grow up a little bit more right maybe she doesn't feel this way anymore she is talking about in the past tense you shouldn't place your value on how somebody deems you to be attractive especially men like why does it matter dude like you do know that being a woman in general i feel like the attention that you get from dudes is going to be so incredibly skewed i feel like it would be hard to even determine whether or not the, the attention that you get is even genuine at all you the amount of women that i've met that were like fours in terms of like the one to ten scale which is fine by the way if you're a four or whatever i'm not shitting on you for being like below average or whatever or average i think average people are normal right and 
I talk to these women and they tell me about all the messages they get from dudes and the amount of attention that guys will give them and even give them money and things like that. And it blows your head up. It makes you think that you're way more than what you actually are. And you might think that's not a, that's, that's, that's a good thing, right? You might be thinking like, I'm getting so much attention. I'm so much this and this, but does the attention really matter if ultimately all these guys are actually doing is like trying to base you up, trying to butter you up to try to have sex with you, you know? So when I hear people say like, I get so much attention from men, I, to be honest, like, I don't really care. It's like, it's whatever, to be honest, because attention from random guys on the internet, though it may feel in the moment great. I think personally speaking, attention that you get from that particular man that you're in a relationship with, or maybe friends and family, things such and so forth, like people that actually know who you are is so much more valuable than just, I don't know, a hundred guys on Snapchat telling you that you're pretty and happy, good morning, you know, princess or whatever the fuck. Like, it, maybe I'm wrong on this, but I think one compliment from somebody that actually knows who you are is much more significant than somebody than a hundred random somebodies on the internet, if that makes any sense. My personal opinion. And I hope that she's learned from that. Like, it's, it's not really anything at all to have guys hit you up. It's not. Typically, they would just turn their heads and pretend like I didn't exist. Coming of age as a plus-size woman and seeing all of your friends be flirted and hit on by men and in turn being treated like a second-class citizen <laughs> fucked me up. And I think that experience has really impacted how I view my self-worth and dating. I don't know. There's just so much I could say on the subject. Point being- I mean, I, I see what she's saying. And when you're fat, men will not look in your direction until they're fat too. I don't know about that. I don't know about until they're fat too. That's kind of crazy, man. But I see what she's saying. I understand what she's saying. I'm sure she suffered a lot of trauma from that. But she has lost weight since then. So I'm sure she has better. She's probably better now. Being physically fat is going to prohibit you in the dating market. It's just what it is, right? I know it sucks to say that, but it is what it is. You have to at least go in there with the acknowledge. At least you know how to play the game, right? Too many times I hear people say, like, this is not the way it should be. I get it. It shouldn't be like this, right? Sure. But that's not the way. You're not going to get anywhere by saying something like, it shouldn't be this way. There's a lot of things that shouldn't be this particular way. But it's just the way it is. And if you know how to play the game, at least. Sorry. If you know the rules, then you know how to play the game, right? Acknowledge the rules and work based off of those things. Anyway. It was a long video today, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Um, if you were with me for this entire length of this video, I love you. I care about you. You're an amazing person. I really care about you. If you watched the video in its entirety, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, a comment, a subscribe, a sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. Uh, I want to thank everybody that is a member of the channel. If you are a member, and by the way, how you could become a member is by clicking the subscribe button and then clicking the join button. We do live streams on this channel, not every day, but like, you know, usually five days out of the week at uh, after six o'clock p.m. EST. Um, thank you, everybody that is a member. And thank you for taking the commitment to be a part of, uh, to be with me for the rest of your life. Thank you for that. Everybody that's subscribed as well. I love care and I, oh, you deity, you beautiful specimen. Thank you for taking that commitment also to subscribe. Um, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in clover, a four leaf clover or whatever clover. Maybe there's a clover emoji. You could put that down there too. Whatever you want to do. I think they're beautiful um, pieces of uh, grass or whatever they are. And if you like clovers as much as I do, then let me know because I, I love them. I care about them. I, I grasp on them. I would eat them if they were edible. I guess they are technically edible, but I still wouldn't eat them. But it doesn't matter. You are so amazing, so beautiful, so fantastic. I love the way that you got up this morning and you did what you had to do because you knew that nobody else was going to do it for you. So you had to take the right moves. You had to take the right procedures to ensure that the day is done optimally and taking care of yourself, eating that breakfast, eating that, that lunch, whatever, whatever you're doing right now, it's good that you're doing it because I know that it's you're doing it for responsible reasons to ensure that you're going to be here for tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. You're focusing on how to make yourself a better person and that's super beautiful. Your eyebrows are looking really, really good today. They smell really good as well. I mean, I know personally because your natural musk is such a delightful, beautiful smell that I can't stop smelling sometimes. I dream about it sometimes. Um, sometimes when you dream, I smell, smell on your eyebrows as well. Consensually, of course, consensually. But anyway... Uh, I love you. I love everybody here. Um, if you want to follow me on social media, you can. I'm almost a thousand followers on Instagram. So you want to help me get to a thousand followers, then I'll be cool finally. Um, 
that would I would appreciate that. So you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Discord. We have a Discord server, my second channel that I barely upload on because it's so hard to upload on all these stuff, but it's okay. I'm trying my best. Um, if you want to follow me on any of that stuff, feel free to do so. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.